Welcome to The Christian Atheist, where faith and reason fuse in the Incarnation. Episode number 141, The Structure of a Scientific Revolution. We take a break this week from our series on Malachi, but stay tuned as we have a great deal more to discover. Over the last few weeks, I have attempted to keep up the weekly Monday posting of a new episode of The Christian Atheist, but have routinely fallen behind. As most of you know, I teach philosophy online for the University of Arizona, and Jenny and I have a photography business, all in order to live and fund this ministry. Our lives are, thus, very full and fulfilling. Since the first of this year and our reformulation of this podcast to reflect a new phase in our lives, the research we engage is itself a full-time occupation, a true labor of love for us. It is our delight. Jenny and I feel that God is putting us through an intensive course of learning, remedial in some ways, especially for me, to prepare us for something. Whatever that something is, we are intensely excited both to prepare for and to begin it. To know God is to love Him, and to love Him is to serve Him. Here we are, Lord. Send us. What are we learning? Perhaps the question, what aren't we learning, would be easier to answer. Jenny has always been for me an Old Testament anchor. I had not really read the Bible for 25 years, so I had a great deal of catching up to accomplish in a short time. Hopefully, I did not display my ignorance too graphically in those early years of this podcast. However, my ignorance was on display, even in our very first podcast, as we shall see in today's episode. I pray my ignorance did not lead others astray. Jenny's faith in and knowledge of the Bible garnered over my atheist quarter century was, like so many other characteristics in my wife, my perfect compliment. Exactly what God knew I needed when I returned to him. She helped me to do what I do best as a philosopher, put things together, see and explicate patterns. Together, God gave us the privilege of publishing to date, 140 episodes of The Christian Atheist, and 72 episodes of No Compromise, not to mention all the Simple Gifts podcast, 740 so far. Our change of focus from apologetics to knowing God this year has not, as I feared, contracted our range of study, but infinitely expanded it. God is truth. So to seek truth in all things is to seek to know our Lord. And, this is where the rubber meets the road this season of the Christian Atheist, to know God is to seek to know and understand His Word, the Bible, as it relates to everything else. So, what have Jenny and I been studying together? First and foremost, the Bible itself. And, with a joy and enthusiasm in discovery that neither one of us has experienced before. The Bible is coming alive for us on a daily basis. What else? Plants and birds, edible naturals, archaeology, astronomy, mathematics, and, among other things, what I want to emphasize today. Biology and human genomics. This field, like so much of what we are studying together, has exploded in recent years. Researchers are discovering complexity and design at astonishing detail. Micro-machines. There is no way to avoid the machine analogy at this point. At the cellular level are performing millions of complex tasks all of which are necessary to function seamlessly and accurately beyond our most complex engineering capacities at the macro level, just 
in order for life to continue in its most ordinary functioning. To even begin to understand these highly specialized fields of research, we have had to go back to foundational biology and rebuild our knowledge base. Then we had to play massive catch-up to learn about the unprecedented series of new discoveries over the past three decades. The vocabulary that has proliferated and modulated as new understanding has changed the entire view of what happens in living cells and the organisms built from them. Without our continually developing understanding of the technical terminology, we could not follow the science. And the learning curve has been very steep. We've made great progress, but we both still consider ourselves neophytes. What we have yet to learn dwarfs what we have already learned. The discoveries of the last two decades in genomics alone have been utterly revolutionary. Regrettably, because of their complexity and specialization, these discoveries, and by extension their implications for a broader understanding of the world, have not filtered down, for various reasons, to the popular or common level of understanding. In other words, almost no one outside the scientific specialists doing the work have heard of these discoveries let alone what all the new realities imply for the broader scientific theory. The reams of data yet to be processed in our investigations is staggering. We have only scratched the surface, yet even what we have been able to glean would fill a season of our podcast. Let us end this topic with an important impact that our ongoing research has had on my worldview. In episode one of The Christian Atheist, I said this, I am a lover of science, all that it has discovered, and the stories that it tells. I believe the universe is probably 13.8 billion years old, as cosmologists tell us, not 6,000 as young earth creationists assert. I do not claim to know how human beings arrived on this earth, but I am inclined to believe that evolution is the best answer we've given so far, and for me it rings true with my understanding of God. Scientific accounts are compelling and evidence-driven, tested in the crucible of the real, and Christian faith does not prevent either the search for or the acceptance of scientific answers. While the broad spirit of my words here has not changed. I could not, today, write these same words. As for the age of the universe, we will save that for another time, but for now, my embrace of evolutionary theory is utterly collapsed under the weight of evidence. Michael Behe's argument of irreducible complexity, so quickly dismissed by the popular press, the political elite, and the dogmatic scientific establishment when it was presented in his 1996 book, Darwin's Black Box, has proven prescient. We are now discovering that it is not just individual parts of biological life that are irreducibly complex, but life itself. It could not have evolved by merely natural processes. I was aware of Behe's argument in 2019 to 20 when I wrote those words, but I was unaware at that time of the state of research into biological life processes. I dismissed Behe's argument and sided with the scientific establishment. I chose human reasoning over God's declared truth. With God's help, I will endeavor to never make that mistake again. In the quote from my first episode of The Christian Atheist Above, you will note that I couched my language in the familiar-to-our-listeners Socratic terminology. Quote, I don't claim to know, but I am inclined to believe. End quote. Follow the evidence and allow reality to correct your conception of it. I have taught since day one of The Christian Atheist that the retreat 
into certainty. The failure to acknowledge our fundamental ignorance and human limitations is the bane of an honest asking, seeking, and knocking, an honest pursuit of the truth. It turns out my faith was misplaced in this instance. This is not a change from the process I began when I first walked away from God after Bible college in pursuit of the truth. The journey continues, and truth continues to make itself manifest to me. And as I find it, I want to always be willing to turn from my ignorance toward knowledge and understanding. It is my delight to find where I am wrong and to align myself more tightly to the truth, to God. Our faith journey is always an asymptotic approach and never the arrival at certainty. When our scientific knowledge was extremely limited, evolution appeared plausible, even if only because it stood within the broader set of assumptions formed in the heady atmosphere of Hegelian thinking pervading that time period. We knew so little about genetics and the machinery of life. It has lost even the appearance of tenability, given what we now know, except for those dogmatic believers who cling to it in the face of the evidence. As a Christian, I am ashamed that I so willingly abandoned the more explicit creationist position that my faith in his word was so weak. As my walk with our Lord continues, I will strive to be more faith-filled, more rational and evidence-centered in my pursuit of truth. A recurring theme in all our research is that those who bet against God and His Word end up on the embarrassing side of the controversy. This is especially true in biblical archaeology, where time after time what is merely mythical to the secular mind is found to be veridical. This fact should be unsurprising to the believer. Though I continue to be surprised, and I laugh aloud at myself each time it happens. After all, this pattern is the history of God's chosen people throughout the Bible. In his book, God and the Astronomers, 1978, Eminent 20th century physicist Robert Jastrow, a self proclaimed agnostic unbeliever, said, For the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. This well describes my own continuing faith journey since beginning the Christian Atheist. It has taken several years of serious thought and searching after the truth, and many twists and turns, not to mention some personal moments of utter bewilderment, to acknowledge my own misplaced faith as regards the theory of evolution. It turns out that all those believers sitting in pews, never having studied all the smart people, scientists, philosophers, theologians, and yes, atheists, that I have over the course of my nearly 60 years of life, were correct. And it was me that was wrong. Jenny was there all along waiting patiently for God, reality, to collide with my hyper-rationalizations of the world in which I live, move, and have my being. To turn again from error to truth. My prayer now, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I have sought from the time I turned from God to atheism, to find truth. It turns out that every time I trust human rationalizations 
over God's revealed truths, I am embarrassed, but also now profoundly delighted to discover that it is God, and not man, who can and should be trusted. As Paul said, let God be true, and every man a liar. I am a Christian, with the searching and skeptical mind of an atheist. I don't want to believe anything that isn't true. I know both sides of the looking glass, and I know them with open eyes. I choose Christ's side. I invite you to join me from wherever you stand before the looking glass. That's this week's episode. Thanks for listening, and remember, you can have your religious cake and eat it too. You can have reason, respect for science, a 21st century worldview, and be a Christian.